Hi everybody, love seeing where you're from. This is Annie B. We're live here in Granby. We've just wrapped up the open house here a little bit. We still have some folks hanging around. We're gonna take you around who's left. We're gonna show you a lot of things in the boat. Cheers everyone, love hearing where you're from. Tell us where you're watching from and I love also hearing uh, when you started watching. Thanks, Madison. Madison says the audio is good. Just waiting for a few more people to join us. Hey, CF. Hi. Thanks for smashing that like button, Brody. Welcome to Live from the Boat Shed 15, everybody. Got a nice little bucolic scene out here with a couple of fire pits. We actually have a little stove going on over there. Aaron's got a Kiva. Y'all are on TV. Hello on TV. <laughs> All right, who here drove the furthest? Who's, who's still here who drove the furthest? Maryland. We got Maryland here. We've got folks watching from Albany, Georgia, Phoenix. I've seen Australia. I've seen the Netherlands. Thanks so much for joining us. Canada, Finland, Germany. CF says, congratulations on number 200, Steve. Not just me. We wouldn't be here with 200 if it was just me. <laughs> Arkansas, California. Did someone just say Lubeck, like Maine? What? Hello from hell, says Enzo. Warmer than here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna switch it into the boat shed just now. Aaron, can you bring in Akiva? See, okay, so Akiva, some people gave me some crap the other day because Akiva got all wrapped up. Now, see, he just does that. <laughs> they were telling me I didn't know how to walk a dog. <laughs> Takes two to tango. Takes two to tango. <laughs> Good evening from Norway, Denmark, UK, Germany, Netherlands, Czech Republic. <laughs> so we plan on showing you a lot of things in the boat that you have not seen in episodes yet. We have definitely put in a few things today that we're really proud of and we look forward to, to showing you that. Would love for you to send your questions, please. We'll do our best to answer them. What's that? Yeah, bring them right up. Actually, can we please have the gate shut? As well? Oh no, maybe we can't do that. <clears throat> hey, I saw Bob Emser show up there. I saw your comment flash by, Bob. Thank you so much for your beautiful note today. I hope everybody's watching and subscribed to the art of boat building, which is such a beautiful channel lately bob has been casting bronze and we may do some of that with him maybe but we've got a tight schedule coming up um how are we for sound is that going to be good all right so we've got a couple of special guests in today we've got aaron and his dad We've got David, who has volunteered with us. Everybody, I think, remembers David card scraping the interior of the yeah. planking. Yeah. <laughs> We've got friends who are visiting due to the open house. Our new Randy. friends. And we got Randy. How's he doing? Doing well. Oh, look at Dapper in that hat, Randy. <laughs> Loving that hat. Wish I had one on. And, um, and I would like to introduce KP. Yay! And we're gonna spend a little time with KP later, but um, really, I wanted to introduce. I wanted to make sure everyone got a good hello with with Aaron, if he's okay with being on camera for a minute. Okay, well, you're staying up here. Yeah, I gotta keep that. You gotta focus on the camera for a minute. No, I've got 
I'm going to go keep it. All right. So, Aaron, sometimes people want to know what school's like for you and what your favorite things are at school. Oh, just whatever you think. Whatever you're just talking to me. I'm just it's just me. And okay, well there's a big puddle that gathers up behind the main building of well that we call it Hartsburg Hall. And there's so much ice. And there are a few games going on where there's like everyone like cracks at the ice and whoever gets the most sizable pieces of ice wins the game. It's kind of fun. Oh. Ice smashing. Ice okay. smashing. <laughs> <laughs> I like that game. Do you guys have like a name for the game? Mm. We just say, hey, want to go smash some ice? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and uh, what's your favorite thing to work on on the boat? Is there anything like when you come to help us out here, is there a favorite thing you like working on? Um, like, is there something you wish Steve would let you work on? Hmm. That's a tough question because I don't know much about the boat yet. Uh huh. What's the favorite thing you've done so far? A favorite thing I've done so far. Let's see. Um, probably taking apart the light thermojiggers. Taking apart Victoria's old light fixtures. Yes. Yeah, I don't know if anyone got to see Aaron doing that. that. We didn't. No. We didn't put a lot of that in. But um, Aaron. I also love doing the teak grate. The teak grate. The locust grate. Locust grate, yep, yep. Although they are typically made of teak, so yeah. I would have said the same thing, my friend. Yeah. I've probably called it that in front of you many <laughs> times. <laughs> so, well, I'm you glad called you called it that. I probably did. Yeah. Yeah, it's traditionally a teak grate. Our version of teak. Yep. Oh, uh, this friend says, Aaron, whatever you do, just do your best. No one can ask more. That's a nice thought. Oh, God. oh boy. See, Aaron's, Aaron's got Akiva over here who is unruly and will not be answering questions tonight. And they're pretty equally matched size-wise. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You guys, are, you guys are built to battle. Um, so, David, where is your son? Uh, my son Grant is at BU today. Uh, he's gone off to college. And I think a lot of people remember the two of you, like I said, cards <laughs> Hard scraping the interior of the boat. Yes. But we really appreciate all of your work. And what has been your favorite thing to work on here at, at, at Arabella's boat shed? I think that, that that week that I spent here working on the card scraping and oiling the interior was just awesome. And yeah. I totally appreciate the fact that, you know, I live nearby and I can swing by sometimes and just see how things are going and contribute where I can. Awesome. I will say that the uh, most ridiculous part of that, that week was using a, 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 a rag that was way too small. Yep. And just going on little tiny circles throughout the entire interior of the boat before I realized, why am I not using a much bigger rag? <laughs> <laughs> so. I think we've all done it, though. <laughs> we've, we've all used a chisel that needed a, that needed a sharpening about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> we've all <laughs> used the wrong size mallet. Yep. <laughs> why is this hard? Oh, thank you to everybody who is sending super chats and super stickers. They're adorable, and this is our first time using them. If you're donating to the project, we just really appreciate it. This is, it's hard to keep up with you, and I thank you. <laughs> I appreciate you. Um, so, Randy, how about you? How about you? What's your, been your favorite moment I here at helping, A2A? Helping to put the planking on. It yeah. really felt like you were working on a boat putting the planking on yeah and is that something that you had done before you came no 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 i i'm an armchair sailor <laughs> <laughs> that's great well at least there are a lot of people who consider that a bad thing but i think that it's nice to come i'm glad you come here and dream yeah. with us yeah no i when i first saw them i said yeah i want to help these guys out and help them it's, it's really really great just like steve said you know i'm one of those older people who say yeah do your dream do your dream it's it's really great i'm just been lucky that I've been help out a little bit that I have done. So. Awesome. Great job, Steve. <laughs> oh, that's so great. Awesome. Have we hit everybody? Dad, listen, listen, <laughs> listen. Yes. This is Aaron's dad, everybody. I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be. <laughs> so uh, your kid climbs all over uh, really dangerous stuff. He uses some dangerous. Uh, this is and that's 
and uh, we appreciate him so much. I'm glad. And, um, you know, if I, when I was um, dreaming about the day when I'd be a father, knew that my child was going to get to spend significant amounts of time with MacGyver, um, I would have, I would have said, yeah, let's do that. But I didn't think that it would happen, you know, it turns out. <laughs> MacGyver lives a few doors down from us and uh, offered my kid a job. So I'm like, yes, Richard Dean Anderson. Uh, yes, yes, teach my kid to make a wooden boat out of toothpicks and uh, what's that stuff called? Do do dolphinite. Do yeah, dolphinite. Yeah. <laughs> toothpicks and dolphinite. This guy can do anything. As evidenced by the 10 foot winch pole at the very beginning just to make a tree come down with the custom grinding wheel and the whatever just to get mechanical advantage i'm just going to put together some mechanical advantage real quick you know like that so uh yeah aaron's going to pick up a lot of good things by being around mcgyver and company mcgyver at here yes awesome yeah awesome well we really have a lot of fun with aaron and he's such a I know we're talking about you in the third person, Aaron. I'm sorry. But anyway, we really like, I like my coworker. Mm. I think he's cool. So. Yeah. Thanks for having him. Yeah. <laughs> I just saw somebody. Somebody just snuck in. Sneak in? And it's his dinner. I, I threw I in to take so care of the dog. I feel so How are you, Ann? Hey, Grandpa Dave. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Oh. It's a busy afternoon down here, I'll tell you. It really has been. <laughs> it really has been. Aaron. Kept everybody hopping. Yeah, well, we've been hosting all day. How many people do you think we had here? At the I don't know. House? Um, the gentleman parking the car said he parked at least 50, and that was around 130. And if you figure two people per car, that's 100. But cars were, were leaving, cars were coming after that. So I don't know. 150, 175 people? Wow. I don't know. That's a guess, but Maybe. just at two people per car. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. And one dog. Two dogs. Another dog came and visited. Huh. Akiva. <laughs> sure did. Akiva's been in his glory all day. He's been, he's been getting pats. He was hanging out out by the merch table. Yes, you have. You've been a good boy. Yes, you have. Yes, 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 yes. That's so good. That's so good. So, um, I'm going to turn around the crew now, folks. Oh, no. And I have been also using this microphone because I was a little loud in mine. So, okay. like, what's new? Story of my life. Yeah. Um, so, today we focused a lot on, um, like, people stories in yep. relation to what we've done with the boat. Yeah. And Steve, which episode did you start working for Acorn Arabella? Episode zero. <laughs> <laughs> Been here since before there was an episode. Yep. <laughs> the prequels as well. The prequels, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Ben. I started at episode 57, according to, so I've, this was 200 episodes for Acorn Arabella and 143 episodes that I've edited. So, uh, which is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I figured it out. I started at 136. Yep. And uh, KP, um, yeah, let me two. calculate, Anne. Yeah, that's right. So, episode just 200. Just, episode, this is my first. Yeah, 200 is when I started. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> which is pretty cool. And if I went back, it would probably be. Episode one. Episode one, the scary. Hey. Yeah. Episode one, the scary. Actually, a new I, hope. There was a question I had for you about, um, and that, like, you know, Steve's sitting right there. You can say whatever you want. So, really? So this kid comes to you. There's no. This kid? This kid. I've known him all my life, you know. I know. I took stitches out of him. Aww. <laughs> when, uh, before Boathouse, before any of this sort of stuff, he comes to you and says he wants to cut a bunch of trees down on your land. Yeah. Ka-ching, ka-ching, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and I ended up with nothing but a boat. <laughs> I gave this kid all these trees and all I got was this lousy boat. Yeah, it's not even floating yet. I mean. 
<laughs> but it's going to get there pretty quick, I guess. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Are, good news. But how, in relation to the boat and the trees, was it was it easy for you to say yes, or did you have reservations about it a little bit? No. Um, he talked to me. I talked to Graham. Graham says fine. I say fine. Um, we we didn't have a problem with that. No, we've harvested timber. But as long as we've had the farm, I mean, it, I mean the timbers. You build your house. Yeah, I, I built my house. I built the barn. Uh, you know, the woods are like a hayfield. We harvest the hay. We harvest the timber. Yep. So. Yep. Uh, yep. It's just like the land continuing to do what it always has. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. The last harvest we did. Blackberry bushes grew up all over the place, and we had blackberries for two or three years till they got shaded out, and then it went back to. Yeah, you it, gotta it, love those first selected you know, species like that. Oh, yeah. Blueberries are the yeah. same, and they're my the favorite. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was yeah. fine. No, it was fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take a moment here to just check. Uh, the, these comments are coming in so fast, folks, and I really want to answer questions, but they are fast. Plus, most people are saying. Harry says, "So I don't do wood, I don't do boats, but damn it, you inspired me. Thank you, people. LOL from Germany. Um, just so many beautiful, beautiful comments. This is my Friday night favorite show." Uh, since you melted the lead for the keel. It would be really nice if you ever sail your way into Whitehaven Harbor, northeast coast of England. Thanks, Howard. Hi from Shetland. Been following you from the beginning. Hope you have a chance to visit the UK and maybe Shetland in future. There was a NASA Apollo documentary on recently, and I caught Ben's name in the yeah. credits. Hey, excuse me, so I'm a space nerd. Can you please tell me more about this. Yeah, it was a uh, it was a I, it was a PBS American Experience series, I think. The the director's name is Robert Stone and he works and lives out of the Hudson Valley and he did I think it was a five year project of getting all this uh, footage from the lunar missions. And uh, he put it together. Put it together, and I was in a. I, I helped him with some assistant editing, here and there. Mostly, he just needed someone to uh, scream at once in a while, <laughs> and I was that guy. Did you get to go to the moon? I did not get to go to the moon for real, but I got to go to the moon. Um, I believe it's a real place. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I'm convinced after seeing all the footage that we actually did. It. We actually went there. So we went to the moon, people. We went to the moon. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, another weird thing that I did before coming to Acorn to Arabella that uh, you can see soon is a, a, uh, a film biopic of Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber. And I did, I'm serious, dead serious. I did, I did, I did some extra editing for that. I cut some scenes for the director of the film and I'm also in the movie. What? Did you Build a I got blown up. I, I, I play Ted Kaczynski's first <laughs> victim, the owner of a computer store. No. And I had a mustache for the film and everything. <laughs> it's you um, being typecast? <laughs> I'm not afraid of being typecast at all. I don't even know what that would mean. So. Can we put so, that link up to so yeah. see that movie? Yeah, it's going to be called Ted K. It comes out uh, the 18th, I think. And at some point, we're going to show it at my movie theater, the screening room. Yes. And my buddy, who was a co-writer and a researcher on the film, is going to come hang out and uh, talk after the film, too. Nice. Just funny aside, I was in a movie about Ted Kaczynski. Uh, but my true love is wooden boat building. <laughs> Good segue. I'm, I'm all about the segue. <laughs> I didn't come in time. I didn't come in time. Sonny asks, um, are you planning on sharing your sea adventure with anyone, or has it always been, ultimately, a solo project? Uh, no, the plan is to share the sea adventure as well. Thank God. Um, thank God. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll show Arabella launching and me learning to sail and bumping into buoys and docks and missing moorings and all that fun stuff, getting seasick, I'm sure. Uh, and then after that, yeah, there's lots of crazy wild places I want to go see and visit, and 
hope to take you all with us as long as you want to come. Me. Yeah? Maybe. Please come up to There's, Baffin Island with us. Yeah. There's another possible interpretation of the question, which is, are you planning on sharing the boat with a fellow human on board as you're being filmed with all these adventures, or is it a solo adventure? Oh, uh, fair, yeah. Um, so it won't be just me on the boat. Um, the boat has bunks for four or five people. Uh, Robin is planning on coming with me, and I hope she does. We haven't been together all that terribly long, so we'll see. I don't want to write checks we may not cash, but that is the plan. Uh, and then I've got lots of friends and people who have helped out and folks that I hope come journey and voyage with us. And if we're going to keep doing the channel and filming, it would be really great to, uh, to have another boat and do some tandem cruising so that we can have our production crew with us. Because it does take a few hands and a bit of time and effort to, to be able to, to film and produce. And yep. trying to do the adventuring and the filming is a bit challenging. It's a little easier to do one or the other. <laughs> Will you be able to, to manage the boat single-handed? Uh, eventually, yeah. She's full keel and, you know, gaff catch, so single-handing, like, around a busy harbor would probably be pretty tough, um, but single-handing her offshore shouldn't really be all that bad. Yep. Um, Noisemaker X says, if you were ever to sail to the north of Sweden, I'll gladly lend you a car for a week. If you want to go explore, Ooh. keep up the good work. Got a car in Sweden. Yes. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, and uh, <laughs> thanks to everybody who are sending in contributions to the project. We Thank really you. really appreciate it. It's, it's amazing. And I just wanted to pull this one out from Dave, who says, during the time I've been watching, I've been made homeless, diagnosed with ALS, and found myself in a new house and fired up with a new project despite and um, so thank you for sharing your story dave and we appreciate it and um all the best for your health um let's see i would like please oh where did the name arabella come from asks charles olson nowhere really it's just i like the name and thought it fit and sounded good and you know there's a. Uh, Everything else has a story behind Don't it. Don't worry, so. we'll come up with a better. See, I was reading a lot of Thomas Hardy, and uh, <laughs> no, never mind. Right? Um, Did anybody get that one. reference? No, I didn't. Um, it's too literary for me. But. <laughs> yes, we'll come up Thanks with a story. Thanks for bearing with me, everybody. Your, your chats come really fast. And... Do, 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 do. So, I Jason. have a question for oh. Ben. Uh-oh, oh, uh-oh, oh, yeah. What did you first think when you were cruising Indeed looking for possible gigs and you came across these nut jobs building a boat looking I mean, for an editor? When I was doing that, I was I was firing off like, I was at a point, I was firing off seven, eight re resumes a day. I had three or four different resumes based on the like seriousness of the job versus how well they needed to perceive me as being serious. And the one that I sent them was like, all right, I'm just going to, this is like, this is the true story of me, and like it had the stuff that I'd done with Ted K and the the Apollo documentary and a bunch of other weird stuff that I've been involved in, and um, that's the one that I sent them. And uh, yeah, when he called <laughs> when he called me back, I was down in my office and I was like, wait, what? What? Did, what was this? It's, and it took me a second to reconnect to like, oh, that boat project thing that I never ever thought like anybody <laughs> would like. There's no way that I would have gotten called back on that but yeah indeed.com not a place that i expected uh, to find myself involved with something like this so <laughs> yeah we uh we desperately needed an editor yeah and i just posted i was like i don't know how to do this so i'm just gonna yeah. post on indeed and we'll see what happens and uh yeah we got like 80 applicants and there was a bunch of people like yourself with years of experience yeah. Uh, and I'm glad you sent us the resume that you did because that weird resume, we're like, that's what we're looking for. Yeah, <laughs> the weirdo. Yeah. So yeah, the rest is history. Here's a technical question. Script Kitchen asks, uh, was major question, actually it was just, you know, right before that, was that a really close call when your brass welding expert friend came back at the right moment to point out to you that you were about to do the floor welds at the wrong temperature? Yeah, um... Oh man, I'm totally oh, yeah, the blanking German, the on German. his name, the German. Um, yeah. Um, oh God, oh. I feel horrible. 
Anyways. It's not like this is archived. Um, right. Yeah, it will be archived. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, damn it. Leave it in. Um, this chat will be archived. This. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is gonna bother me. You start talking, and I'm gonna I'm gonna rack my Rip brain. brain. You, you tell the story. Yeah. Anyways, we started working on the bronze, and uh, we got contacted from a German guy who was working in Worcester, and which is about an hour from here. And he didn't know anyone in the United States, and just was here for kind of a paid internship. And he followed the project and reached out to us uh, and wanted to know. And he came out and had done a whole bunch of welding and metal fabrication and in Germany and had gone through school for it. Uh, and he was he was a great hand. It was perfect he timing. He was so calm and cool and collected and like that was such a. Smooth... Oh, it was great to work with. Oh. I I cannot believe I'm forgetting his name right now. It feels terrible. Anyway. But. Yeah. Yep. We've done it. We've, we've made it we've made that mistake, and now it's time to move on. Yep. So we're nearly halfway through, and I wanted to make sure there are a couple of people asking um, who our visitors are. In the room. so we've got if if you don't recognize, I think everyone recognizes Aaron, who's dressed in his work uniform. He works here. Uh, we've got Randy, Randy, who worked on that, worked with us on planking. We've got friends from away, as we would say in Maine. So we've got. Um, can you introduce yourself, Jim? Jim. Thank you. And you're visiting from? From not far away, uh, Providence, essentially, Rhode Island. And you came for the open house today. I came for the open house and decided I would stay for a while because I've been watching for so long. I just wanted to see my family away from family and touch the boat. Oh, how nice. <laughs> and uh, you're visiting from I'm Maryland, from, right? Yep. Eastern Shore? Eastern Shore. <laughs> yep. So my name's Jeff. Jeff. And I drove a long way, so I stayed a long time. <laughs> yep. Yeah, there you go. And there just a writer. I am a writer. You yep. can find me at jeffreyscottwriting.com. There's an article about this place on there. Let uh, me yep. scroll down a little bit, and we have fun. Yep. yep. Cool. I'm Brennan, Aaron's dad. And uh, I was here for the open house as well, because we live five doors from here. <laughs> and uh, I just want to say... People flew in from Florida. I, have you named that yet on the thing? I don't think no. you've named it during the live. There were people who flew from Salt Lake City, Utah. Salt Lake City, Utah, yeah. Uh, I, was like, I was like, from Kansas? Yeah. Oh, that's where I'm from. I didn't get to talk to the oh, Kansans. Maybe it was you. No, no. no. Uh, what do we call people from Kansas? Are there Kansas? Kansans. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I like to know these things. <laughs> or you can just say, oh, you're from the flyover states, yeah. and then just move on. Um, yeah, that's oh, what a lot of people on the coasts do. Anyway, sorry, uh, do that. <laughs> it was amazing because I said to them, I was like, I was like, oh, did you like work this into a vacation? You know, they said, no, we came for this. Yeah. And then we will work a vacation after this. But this is the primary. I just was like, what do you have to build over the course of six years to have people come from Florida and Salt Lake City and Baltimore, Maryland and all of that for a four hour party? Yeah. It takes this level of commitment. I was blown. I was talking to Aaron about it as we walked home for dinner in between the two events. Anyway, just amazing to me. So it was, a, it was cool to see everybody's love. Awesome. Thank you. And then, of course, we've got Grandpa and David over here. If you didn't Jacob. catch. <laughs> Jacob. His what? name is Jacob. What am I doing? Jacob the, the German. German. The German. Jacob the German. Oh, oh, I was like, his name is David. <laughs> That's bothering me. Okay. That's David. I almost. Jacob was the one that helped us with the level. When he speaks German. Listen to me. Angry. I don't like. I don't like messing up people's names. And I thought. I thought Steve just told me I've been calling David. No, no, no. Whose name is Jake? No. no. His name is. I just David. remember Jacob's name. <laughs> it's me, Annie B. I haven't shown my face yet, so I'm just gonna do that for two seconds. Done. And we're done. Um, we do have a lot of things to show off inside the boat, and that's where we're going to actually meet KP and talk a little bit more about that sort of stuff. Um, and I feel like we're also hosting you too, but I hope you don't mind if we go disappear down into the boat for a moment, everybody, and, and uh, show, reveal some things. We have a thousand people watching right now, and we really appreciate awesome. you all joining us tonight. It's really something. And... Um, I don't know, maybe we'll just watch Akiva for the next 30 minutes. Does that seem reasonable? Yeah, a compliance officer. Yes, he's the compliance officer. He's the morale officer. He takes care of the bunnies. And by that, I mean eats them. Yeah. <laughs> Forever. Forever. 
Um, let's go down. Cool. Uh, I put my dinner on so I Thank you. I'm gonna hug grandpa on camera. Oh what? don't 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 put oh, that geez, on the air. Don't put that on the air. <laughs> we didn't mention Thank you. Yeah. Oh yeah, he works. So people out. worried about the boat. He'd rather. He'd rather. No rather he'd rather. Yeah, he's good. Cool. Finally got the ladder finished. Got my security mode. Um. Yes, and you're gonna. Yeah, sure. Yay! Got my. Yeah. Got my butt on camera. Yeah. Cheers. Sit on the head? Yeah. <laughs> Super cool. <laughs> Even though it smells a bit like epoxy. Ugh. Yeah, that epoxy in your paint is yeah. so off guessing. It's going to take a while for that smell to go away. Yeah. It's going to take a little while. A little rotten fruit, you know. Right? Oh, yeah, that, that's... Um, so here we are inside the boat, Steve, and I think we have a few things to show people. Um, uh, let's see. Gosh, where to well, start? I'm sitting on one of them. So if you look behind KP here, you'll notice that one of our water oh. tanks is sitting in place. Uh. So thank you so much to Evan at MS Fabrication in Dorchester out by Boston for making those for us. So there's the one in the head there. Uh, there's one underneath the nav table. Aaron, can you lift up the nav table a little bit? Yeah. Yep. And you can see there's a tank under there. Nice. And then, yeah, Ann and Ben, you guys are We're sitting, on, sitting on the other one. We're sitting on the other one. By the way, um, my body is in such a position now, if anyone's watching this, this is usually how my work day is. <laughs> this is just how my how I need to move about the world. I would take a picture of you, but it wouldn't be appropriate. Probably <laughs> <laughs> <Early> not. <laughs> um, so here is the... Here's probably the biggest reveal, yeah. So here's a... Uh, Here's one of the tanks that Evan made. This has got a couple baffles in it, uh, and it's got our inspection ports. And then we've got some of Victoria's mahogany here with some fresh coats of varnish on it. And then we did a little tile work. So this is going to be the home for the diesel heater. This is actually the installation, right? This is this is essentially with, without. This is just a mock-up for the um, Yeah, this isn't stove the pipe. real stovepipe. It's just to get a sense of that size something going up. But everything else, yeah, it's its final install. Uh, so we did the tile job around cement board with some wood trim that's bolted to the bulkhead. And then the Dickinson diesel heater is bolted in there. Uh, and this will be featured in a very soon video. Uh, we'll go into detail about how we I did all that. I look over at Ben. Yeah, Ben. Oh, you're not next week, I think. Yep. Um, yeah, and then we've got a heat shield to be installed above it that Evan cut out for us. And then this is going to create a great little useful nook here by the set tee for storing things as well as the shelf. So shape it up to be quite a bit of storage space. Don't let go. <laughs> You are kind of the best. use of the exposed okay. nuts and bolts in. Yeah, yep. that everyone is afraid we're getting out. nicked on or yeah, whatever. That's a real meat grinder. In that's fair. Um, a Kiva buddy. Well, I think our biggest reveal is KP. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> oh, oh. Wowzers. <laughs> sitting on the head. I'm just sitting on the head. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hey. So, um, let's see. Directly on this. So, um, yeah, um, basically, I'm gonna give the short story. Yeah. So, it, it just so happens. Hey, it's me and Steve. 
Um, it just so happens that uh, KP and I went to high school together. True. And uh, we've known each other for a long time. I started working at Wooden Boat Magazine, and I know that KP, all of a sudden, like when we got back in touch a few years ago, um, that they were working at um, which Great, boat? Which Great boat? Island. Great Great Island, Island Boatyard. So I went down. Harpswell, Maine. In Harpswell, and so mid coast for me, that would be down. Um, and uh, yeah, we've been in touch ever since about about boat stuff as well as like. The past. Yeah, remember when we were 16? Remember when we were 16? <laughs> no, actually, I do not. But also, um, so uh, we were looking for a carpenter, and KP, we were sort of, <laughs> we ended up talking a few weeks ago by accident for a few hours um, after, after KP figured out how Instagram chat works. No, I didn't figure it out. <laughs> I didn't know there was an Instagram chat. Suddenly, Anne was on my video, on Instagram video, which I didn't know existed. So we yep. talked for two hours. So we talked for two hours. And then out of that came a visit here, out of potential, you know, would you like to come down? And then now KP will indeed be coming down to work on Arabella as our new carpenter. Yeah. Can you tell me a bit about how you got started in boats? Um, and what you've done so like just sort of generally and and what short version or long is. version short version short version -ish. okay yeah i um went to wooden boat <gasps> school for a year i uh, had no idea how to use a saw this was back in 2004 five so a couple years ago and uh fell in love with boats fell in love with woodworking fell in love with the ocean didn't grow up sailing um, and then started working at boatyards and um, kept being in love. But um, I also, you know, have sailed a little bit and rigged a little bit and done a little of this and that and um, this and that more specifically. Like when I saw you and I was re reframing a 48 foot wooden catch at Great Island and built a steam box and you know cut the cut the oak into 16 different angles and I mean that you they've seen all that stuff right see you've seen the they've seen all the steam bending of yeah frames and stuff steam bending frames here mm -hmm. yeah cool. yeah first and like, um, this slightly smaller boat but yeah yeah, yeah for sure but same 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 idea probably even yeah like, yeah yeah so um what else? Is that a good? Yeah, that's great. And um, so what are you hoping for here? What is, what's exciting about, you weren't boat building just now, but now you're coming back into carpentry and what is appealing about being here? So I left boats full time about two and a half, three years ago. Uh, I was doing some captaining work, doing some sailing work, but I was like, you know, I don't want to retire doing this. <laughs> I would much rather be able to afford my own boat than to work on fixing other people's boats. And so I've been working on going to grad school and going to nurse practitioner school. And I got into school and I'm ready to go in May. In May, And then Anne said, hey, I'm doing this project. I was like, that's cool. I love wooden boats. That's like, that's where my heart is. But like, I've built wooden boats. It's cool, but like, I'm doing my thing. But there's something about Acorn Arabella that I was like, oh, okay. This is more than just a boat. This is like a community of people. A thing. A th it's a thing, right? Like it's a whole thing, exactly like Aaron said. It's a thing in and of itself that's about far more than just the boat. My hat. Um, it's about, you know, like community and aspirations and making a dream, hap dream happen with enough research and work and asking for help and just daring to do it. So I came to visit and I was like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. I got to contact my school and ask if they'll do a deferral. But they won't. But I said, oh, well, <laughs> I, I got to go. <laughs> Be part of this and sharpen up my tools and and load them up and make it out here. So that's what I'm doing. 
I love it. Also, on the next live, we'll be going through KP's tools. Because that's what ands do. <laughs> that is what oh. an and do. <laughs> I better clean it up then. <laughs> oh, somebody says, oh, Madison says, KP is getting more awesome. Oh, well. Like, you got to, like, and Madison love that. Um, let's see. I live on the Cape. Is it possible to drop by or is it discouraged? Or do you prefer that people who drop by have armloads of lunch? <laughs> uh, so, so we, a while back, actually created a visitor entrance. So visitors are welcome during daylight hours. Please don't come when it's dark out. Um, but other than that, uh, you come up to the boathouse and you'll see signs. Read the signs. Follow the signs. They'll take you around to the back of the boathouse. You'll walk in right underneath Arabella's stern. There's a visitor entrance there. Uh, there's a guest log. There's a self-serve merch station, contribution box. Um, so stop on by, take some pictures. If we're here, we'll say hi. But generally, we're just going to kind of keep working. And uh, it's like, um, I don't know, go into one of those reenactment villages or something where everyone's doing their thing and working and you're just kind of like a fly on the wall watching. That's pretty much what it's like when you come visit here. Um, we try to say hello when we can, but oftentimes we're filming or maybe even we're off getting something at the lumber store. Not not yeah. for lumber, but for tools. Supplies, Supplies consumables. Supplies, things like yeah. that. So we may be here, we may not, but we sure do want you to come in and have a look on... Um, on the observation mezzanine. Mm hmm Yeah. And sign the guest book. Sign the guest book. So, uh, let's see. What's next? Hello from Belgium. A true fan. Mm, nice. So great. Thank you so much. Um, Tina says, hello from Atlanta. Thanks, Anne, for the emails. My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> My absolute pleasure. Um, and that is, that is normally who you get when you... Yep, so when you reach out to you us, know. generally you communicate with Ann, and Ann will pass things along to me. Yep. He and hears, that way I don't have to spend it. two hours a day at the computer. <laughs> <laughs> so, look at this. Look at this handsome boy. Wondering if I'll pet him or not. He's dumpy in the boat. He's so dumpy in the boat right now. <laughs> He's, like, <laughs> He's so handsome. Let's see, I'm going to give everybody a, a, a better look at the tank that we were talking about earlier that Aaron showed us. So we want to lift people. this up and do everything. Oh, there you go. Aaron, that's your first time seeing these. Thanks, you know Aaron. what these are for, bud? What? You want a little light on that? Yeah, sure. Do you remember what these are for, bud? Hey. Huh? It's for, the, it's for juice. Juice? That's how much juice we have to carry. Yeah, like fruit juice. No, just kidding. It's for water. These are the water. fresh water tanks. There you go. For what, 98 gallons? Total or about 98? Is that uh, true, Steve? 94 95. 94 95 gallons. Thank you, Satchel. Yep. <laughs> for helping us figure that out. We guesstimated Here's... pretty well, though. Yeah. I wanted somewhere between 90 and 120. And 90 works. If we didn't have a water maker, I would definitely want some more tankage for big crossings, but since we plan to put a water maker in, it'll be fine. Yeah. Hey, uh, Bauer Dad, would that happen to be Stephen Bauer up in Portland, Maine? Please let me know if that is you. <laughs> he says, ooh, I like that pattern maker's vice. Can you, yeah. It's been a little, ooh, it's no. been a hot minute since we've popped that thing like up and down and all around. Can you yep. give a demo there? That's so cool. Yeah. So. Give it a whirl. Give it a whirl. So it goes, uh, let's see, opens and shuts like a normal vise, but it's got dogs that are built in. So you tap those up, and you can clamp your workpiece between those, or you can knock those ones down, and you can clamp your workpiece between the dogs and stops that you put in the holes, which is really nice. Uh, another fun feature is you pull this lever, and this spins. And it has stops, so it'll stop at increments all the way around. This end has got the jaws, and these are the other sides of the dogs. So you can make those flush and they stick out the bottom. Or you can have them popping up that side. 
And then a really nice feature with this is you turn this dial here and it racks the jaws. So it doesn't have a ton of play to it, but it has enough that you're working with something that's tapered. You can articulate it. Or the nice thing with it is if you're working with something really thin, you can angle them so that you're just pinching at the very top, which is, which is really nice. And then the last kind of cool feature with this is you tell the other woodworkers like, oh, wow. pull this lever, and the whole thing just comes up. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Oh, it's on a, it's, oh, it's, it's, fetched, it's fetched up on a plant, yeah. yeah. Oh. oh my god. So Those won't go. be there in, in a C state. Yeah. That's and then that'll, that'll lock anywhere <laughs> along there. So you can lock at that angle and you can spin it around. And that front, whole front piece comes off too if you want to extend yeah. space into the room so and. This whole piece unscrews, and then you're just left with these jaws here, yeah. which don't really protrude much at all, and you lose all of that. So if we were going to go do a crossing, and we knew that we definitely weren't going to be using the vise for anything, and it was going to be in the way, yeah. literally just a couple bolts, and you could take the whole vise out and store it. But it'd be real easy just to take the front off, and yeah. it's a lot less obtrusive. But between this and the accoutrements that go with the hold downs, you can clamp pretty much anything on the workbench. Whoa. So if you had to do some sort of repair and you had to get this object to stay put so that you could work on it, between the vise and what we have for the bench, it won't be a problem at all. And it's also just been great working on the boat in here, not having to take things up to the bench. Yeah, every time you're fitting something and, I, and we just sort of like boop, boop, Pop it over, shave a couple, you know, yeah. passes, and then... it's It adds up to a lot of time it's and so a lot of energy time. going up and down. Um, when it see. turns into an instrument building channel, you know, yeah. it's going to be really useful. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, Send them all back to me. Maybe, maybe I'll, uh, I'll share the violin process when I get around to it. Yeah. That's my next challenge. I want to... Once the boat's done, I'd like to build a violin. I have no idea how to Starting play one. I don't one. play any musical instrument. Under sail. But, yeah. Violin making under, <laughs> under sail. sail. Yeah. That's what the workbench is for. I, I mean, that sounds like a good I've got idea. the maple and the spruce and stuff, yeah. so I'll mill up the blanks before we go. Yeah. And then I'll just tuck them in the boat. They don't take up yeah. much space. Oh, you can and I get can, it. like, pick away at them. Yeah. yeah. You get a steam box in here. Yeah. And do it up on deck. Yeah. Can you? Yeah. I wonder if you can steam with salt water. So you don't not. use your 95 gallons it could. for making violence. I think it just <laughs> boils at a slightly higher temperature. So you just have to make sure you get a hot enough fire is really what you're doing. Does anyone want right. to nerd out about <laughs> <laughs> the boiling temperature of water? Right? <laughs> <laughs> we are officially in, in the, the weeds. <laughs> right. Um, let's see. I'm just backing it up. Um, but I'll say I'm really excited to have KP joining the crew and having yeah. an experienced, competent set of hands working on the boat on a daily basis. It was, uh, it was a really big difference when Carolyn was here, and uh, I'm hopeful that KP will make as big of a difference. And to have KP on for the rest of the build until we get to launch is also awesome. There's no couple months here or there finding more help. Like... We'll be able to get KP up to speed with where everything is and what we're doing, and we'll just be able to work, which is going to be a really nice change. I think we'll be able to show a lot more progress, and we'll make the videos a lot more interesting, and it'll just be great to have some more energy in here. And it's not just me alone or just me and Ann. Uh, it'll be really great. Uh, so earlier, Mr. Palma was here, and I just want to say hi to Mr. Palma. Mr. Palma. Thanks for your open house today. Nice to meet you. And thanks, thanks for coming. For your, thanks for your support on Patreon, too. Um, Jean Giltner, who I know is one of our um, supporters on Patreon. Hello, hello. Uh, YouTube Rocka says, hoping to see Arabella moored at Turkish coasts and Stephen exploring mm. all we have to offer someday. Highly from Istanbul. Recommend that that would be nice. Let's yeah. go get some Meza <laughs> together. Right? Oh, oh I love that song. Oh, oh, 
1990 flood best album ever. Yeah. <laughs> well done. And uh, Bauer Dad says, yeah. It's me, Ann. Oh, hey, Steven. Hey, it's Steven. good to see you. Well, not see you, but I'm glad you're joining us. Yeah. Um, are the water tanks all interconnected for refill or individual? They will all be interconnected for refill and um, for draining as well. So we'll be able to fill all of the tanks from one location, and then we'll be able to drain them all down into the small tank that's in the bilge, and then the pickups will be from there. So we'll be able to set up where we can shut off each tank and draw from whatever tank we want. Uh, and that way, if anything happens or there's a leak or any of that kind of thing, it's, it's isolated to that specific tank. Cool. Um, thanks for that question, Sarah. I had a question in my pocket, and I remember what it is, so I probably don't even need to grab it. <laughs> um, and that is, has anybody considered making a topsail spar? So I, I would think you would do more a jackyard, or, but someone was asking about um, doing tops. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, they're mo, a thing. Mo canvas, mo beta. Mo canvas, mo beta. Uh, ironically enough, uh, the mass fitting that we have from Victoria is set up with belay pins that we believe, and a system on it that we believe was specifically for the topsail. Victoria didn't come with one, but it seems like she was set up for it. Uh, so the main mast, we kind of already have the hardware to do that. We would just need to make the the spar to go up there and the sail and the lines to control it. Um, and a jackyard's always a possibility too. Yep. Yeah. I think I don't think we'll do that for launch. I think that kind of project would be a real fun thing while we're doing on the water. Yep. More canvas high up is always a good thing. Um, Insane Tuna says this project is an absolute joy to follow, regardless of the pandemic and all the difficulties. Thank you. Kevin Watson asks, where's the diesel tank going? The diesel tanks are going in the stern, uh, and they are 20 gallon round Monel tanks that we salvaged. Uh, so they will go, two will go back here um, between the knees and between the knee and the stern. So they'll get tucked right up underneath the deck outboard by the clamp in the shelf. And then the other, the third diesel tank will go all the way in the stern. And when you slide your way into the coffin berth back here, your feet will go underneath that diesel tank. So there will be three tanks in total, uh, totaling 60 gallons of diesel. All right. George Williams says, Ben. Oh. The Ben? If so, <laughs> love your music. Congrats on the 200th. Thank you, George. I started with you all from the 35th. Nice. T thanks to Danger Stew. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, oh, thanks to Danger Stu. Danger, that, Danger? Danger Stu. Danger. Yeah, he's another uh, YouTube channel. Yeah, he's come and visited here before, and yep. oh, nice. we made a video on him, and he made a video on us. That's great. Cool. Yep. That's that was great. Long way back. <laughs> Jeff says, you could build a new dog with all the hair on your coat. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I don't think your coat. I think it's... Welcome to my life. Oh, wow. I think we're oh, talking no. about my, my whole coat. life is covered with Akiva <laughs> hair. It's everywhere. What's this, what is a skill you want to learn to help finish the boat? Uh, the skill that I've spent the most time learning recently is electrical. Um, so before this, I knew virtually nothing about DC electrical, and I've been learning about that and still have quite a ways to go between the electrical and the navigation, batteries, and all that stuff. Uh, so I think that's, that's one of the things that... I need to, to learn the most and skill that I'm, I'm hoping to gain throughout this. Um, sail making and rigging is probably the next one after that. Uh, and thankfully, we've got a bunch of skilled hands around to, to help guide that. Cool. And I uh, Ben. Oh, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Um, let's see. I'm just going to back it up. I want to make sure. So we have, about, we have about five minutes left, a little over five minutes. Oh. Um, Sarah's, Sarah's just killing it with the questions oh, today. God, Will you have any AC power? So AC power starts to get complicated and tricky, uh, and I think we're going to go really, really light on the AC, and a big reason of that is I have almost no intention of having Arabella at a dock of any very regularly. So shore power, she's not going to be hooked up to very often. 
Um, so for AC, I think we're just gonna do shore power to charge the batteries. Uh, and then we'll have, I think, some system kind of like the Blue Eddy or Goal Zero that has an inverter built into it so that we can run some AC from that. Uh, but I think that'll pretty much be the extent of the AC. So there won't be a whole AC system throughout the boat. Cool. I've got um, a question. Yeah. Yeah. Will I be peeling this? You will be peeling that. You can peel it right now if you want. Awesome. Better get started sooner than later. <laughs> Good We've got a live peeling, folks. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, laser film to get off. Do we have any bubble wrap? Aaron uh, peeled all of that off of the uh, the galley stove and the diesel heater. Oh, nice. Are you slowing it? It's a job. Yep. It's a job. Someone's got to do it. <laughs> Aloha from Hawaii. Well, Aloha. awesome channel. Favorite hot Friday morning entertainment. Mahalo. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Mahalo to Aloha for watching. Um, I saw one comment when I was behind you there, and or one question, and someone asked if I was really going to wait to learn to sail on Arabella. And the first boat I sail on will be Arabella. Nice. I won't be captaining Arabella when I sail on Arabella. And once I sail on Arabella, all bets are off, and I'll go jump on any boat that I feel like I want to go jump on. Um, so the first boat that I sail on will be the boat that I built, and then I'll learn to sail Arabella, but once I've sailed on Arabella, uh, I'll go jump on other boats and go check those out and learn from other people on their boats and have them on Arabella and go about it that way. He's a romantic. Badass. Get used to it. <laughs> That's badass. I know a guy who's a captain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They can stick oh, yeah. around. Oh, yeah. You're, you're a licensed captain. What's the level of your... Yeah. You got? Uh, 110. Uh, oh, right. Yeah. You've been on the big one. Arabella's under 100 ton, that's for sure. That's true. Although if you keep it up with this oak, she <laughs> might not be. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just saying. Why do you keep it up with this oak? Stop it with the oak. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, I could drive a big one. I didn't take my sailing exam because I didn't get around to paying them to take the test. But... Oh, the sailing endorsement exam? Yeah. Yeah. But I do know how to sail. Right. Been to Big time. Here and there. <laughs> you should go to the Azores, by the way. Azores, yeah. Mm. Add that to the list. Anyone from the Azores online? <laughs> let's see. All right. Let's get up top and say bye to everybody. We've got about three minutes left. And so, and this dog is, this dog is <laughs> fin fin to get out of this boat. <laughs> Oh, he's so uh, handsome. He's so good. He's so good. Can you try the companion way? I don't know if you can do this. Come on. I bet oh, Akiva, no, Akiva, go ahead, buddy. Akiva, come here. Hey. Right here. Come on. Hey. Good boy. Aaron, can you help guide him to the stairs? Yeah. Good boy. Aaron, can you help guide him to the stairs? No, no. Oh, Akiva, over here. Over here. <laughs> Hold on, Aaron. Aaron, Aaron, let's go. It's either going to go well or not. You're bad. Howdy, chat. How's it going? Oh, boy. Give up. Give up. Give up. Hey, right here. Come on, Aaron. 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 Yes, there in jacket. Yeah, I don't know if anybody noticed that behind the dog hair. The old. Yeah, behind the dog hair. <laughs> so sometimes people ask us about Akiva and his pen, and does he live out there? No. Um, Akiva, Akiva is in that pen so that he doesn't um, end up in traffic or anything. He's, he's a bolter. He, oh, he, yeah. will, he will he will go. He's funny. If he's in the house or like in the boathouse when we have the gate shut, I can just whistle or call and he's super well behaved. But if you take him outside and let him loose, he'll be gone like a gunshot and you can scream your full head off and he'll look at you and acknowledge you and then just go do what he was going to go do. And then he'll come back hours or days later with his ears back and his tail between his legs and come back and know that he's in big trouble. But, you know, it was totally worth it to go do whatever he went and did. So, we got to be careful with him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh.
Randy and David and Jeff and Aaron. Oh, somebody was wondering who's behind the desk. That's Rob. He's my friend. Hello, world. Hey, Rob. Hey, Rob. <laughs> and there's Thanks, Ben. Guys. Thanks, guys. And for uh, us. gosh, I don't know. It's like, I'm I'm overwhelmed. Um, let's see. So let's get all the crew in in the in the shot here for for our last moments here. Thank you so much for joining us. So this is this is live from the Boat Shed 15. This is going to get archived for Patreon. Um, thank you so much for joining us. For five bucks a month on Patreon, we do these once a month yeah. for everybody there. And uh, and we sure do appreciate you. For 15 a month, we have an archive. There's There will now be 15 hours worth of footage to binge in that with questions and whatnot um, that get answered and first looks at things back when that was a thing. But also there's a lot of other needful questions that get asked mm -hmm. on a regular basis. Yeah. We appreciate you so much. Happy 200th episode to all of you. Thank you for checking in as to where you are in the world. Um, your passion for being here to watch this makes us want to do it even more. It's one thing to build a boat. It's another to tell its story. And that's what we're here for. So thank you so much. Happy 200th, everybody. See you on Friday. See you Friday. See you Friday. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, there's an X here.